was that? Here. Okay, welcome everybody to the Eva match briefing with the Irish team. We do have a change of player. We have uh, Tyg Byrne, uh, we have winger Alex Lowe, and we have the uh, That's assistant Alex. coach. <laughs> sorry? Alex, Alex sorry, I apologise. <laughs> and John Fogarty, assistant coach. So, hands up please for a question. We need the microphone. We do have interpretation working. So, can I have the first question, please? Here at the front. Uh, John, um, great to see Robbie out doing some light running. I presume that's a, a big positive. Andy had said yesterday he expected him to be out for two weeks, but is it more hopeful than that maybe? He's good. He's, as you saw, he's out running, so um, he'll be assessed as we go ahead or go along. Um, and we'll see. We'll see after the weekend how he pitches up next week. Tyke, um, the last time you were here was such a memorable night. Uh, how much are you look for, looking forward to playing in that atmosphere again tomorrow night? Massively. Um, and from what I've heard, they've we're being told that there's going to even be even more Irish fans over at this one. So, um, you know, that gives us a massive boost. Um, you know, running out uh, with that with that noise against uh, South Africa was incredible and um, it gives you it gives you an extra lift for sure so I'm very excited about it. Hi John, Andrew, has Andrew picked up an injury or is it just uh, any particular reason why Tyke has come out? No offence Tyke. I'd prefer, <laughs> Andrew, I'd prefer Andrew to be here to be honest. Bit of backup but um, no, he was, he was delayed. <laughs> and uh, He didn't want to come. He's filling in, he's filling in so no. He's all good, he's all good, good to go. He'll be dealt with later. <laughs> <laughs> is, ev is everyone else good to go? Aside from Robbie, obviously. Yeah, yeah, look, it's, it's, um, it's been a good week again. Um, some good prep. And I think everyone's unbelievably excited to get here tomorrow uh, to perform in front of the, uh, our support and, and um, play this game. Okay, question here at the front. Yeah. Um, I might just uh, do a question for both James and Tyg, if that's okay. It's a big weekend for Peter O'Mahony, making his 100 cap, so massive for, for him and his family. James, could you tell me a little bit about your first impressions when you first met Pete? Um, I, I could, but we'd have to turn the TV cameras off. Um, no, he, he's a man who wears his heart on his sleeve, and he uh, deserves all the praise that he's got this week. Um, to play 100 caps for your country is obviously a huge achievement in the way he's gone about his work. Um, is second to none. He's grown into a very, very great leader and uh, one of the best that I've definitely come across. Um, he's emotional. He backs up his words with actions. There's, you can think of many, many games he's been involved in that he's had huge moments that have affected the outcome. And um, he's definitely the sort of guy that you hate to play against but love to have in your team. We heard a nickname for him yesterday. Do you what know what that? that is? The Haggard Badger? <laughs> it's very fitting if you ask me because, um, like I said, the first time I met him, I thought he was more of a Haggard Badger than what I, what I think of him now. But um, he's a grumpy old man in his age, but like I said, he's someone you want on your team. And Tyg for you? Um, yeah, just incredibly impressed by him. Um, my first experiences of him were obviously in Munster and, um, you know, going, going over there. I'd only really seen him in an Irish jersey and what he'd done for Munster as well. But um, to see how he he led the led the squad in Munster and the the training, the the effort he put through through in training, he as Lowy said, he wears his heart on his sleeve, and he's an incredible leader, um, an even better bloke. You know, he's one of the most social guys around the place. Despite what people might think of him, um, he's always one of the last in the team room, having a cup of tea with the lads and just chatting away. So he, he's hugely liked within this group um, and speaks volumes of the man he is. And I, I'm very excited and I'm delighted I get to share the pitch on such a momentous, uh, momentous uh, occasion for him. James. Question towards the front here. I can ask all of you, there's, there's been an infestation of bed bugs in hotels in Paris. Have you been asked to take any precautions to check your bed before you get in them or has that been done for you? No. Fewer lads fumigate their beds. 
um, naturally, so there's, there's been no issues. You, you've, you've had nothing. Some of the front five. <laughs> it's not, not a problem for them. Yeah, Mac, Mac, I think, was a, I got the bit. cause of the problem. Yeah. Shock. <laughs> Guys, I suppose the performance against South Africa, lots of people spoke, uh, this is to, to James firstly, uh, lots of people spoke about the, the nature of that performance against South Africa and it was right up there with one of the all-time great pool games in, in World Cup Rugby. How do you kind of step it up from that? Where do you go from that is probably my question and how difficult is that to do? Um, I think we've, all, all we're doing is trying to prove to ourselves um, that we can back up performance on performance and um, you know a lot a lot was said about how good a test match it was but I think both teams will go away with that thinking you know we can definitely be better and uh, we had the week off we trained well and a few days off as well so um, we've definitely come into this week bouncing um, looking at the ways that we can we can get better you can't brush over things especially when you do win um, because otherwise it's going to, you know, the mistakes that we and the pressure that we put on ourselves are going to come back to bite us in the butt one, one way or another. So um, you take as many learnings as you can from a win as you do a defeat and uh, hopefully we're going to be better for it tomorrow night. A quick question for Ty. Uh, Johnny described this as a last 16. Has there been a different buzz to it as a result? Um, I suppose we've just spoken about the importance of the game and we essentially are into knockout rugby now, aren't we? And um, much of the same, I suppose, against South Africa, we had the same kind of mindset. But, you know, I think there's a feeling around the group that this is it now for us. We, we need to continue to step it up week on week. That's what we're chasing. We're chasing better performances every week. And that's what we're going to have to have to do if we want to continue on in this competition. And it starts on Saturday. So um, certainly there is a feel of a finals week for sure. Okay, question from Sky. Uh, jokes aside, the big bug issue is quite a serious one around Paris. Just to clarify, you're not taking any precautions as a team, no? Not that I'm aware of. No, no, no not at all. <laughs> haven't haven't come across one really. <laughs> and we've, we've yeah, we've been we've been so lucky with with where we've stayed and how we've been looked after while here in France. And yeah, I have I haven't heard of any issues as, as so far. And James, uh, the atmosphere against South Africa. You seem to be like a player who, who thrives on that, the atmosphere, who plays on your emotions. Can you just give us an idea of what those fans can do for you guys again this weekend? Um, man, no one, no one travels like the Irish. And that's like, man, I'd, I'd say that's fact. Like when we played in Bordeaux and Nantes and then uh, to come to this incredible arena last week, it was something that you can't really describe or put into words. Um, you know, the anthem ringing, uh, Fields of Athen Rye, Zombie at the end, and uh, man, those, the de <laughs> it's crazy, like, it's, it's amazing, honestly. Um, I, people are saying 60,000 Irish are travelling over this weekend, and I'll tell you what, their presence is definitely uh, felt, and it's something that we're so, so happy to be on the receiving end of so many um, positive and influential Irish supporters. Okay, rugby news service here. Yeah. Uh, James, first thing, um, has your wife come round to your moustache yet? And uh, <laughs> B, can I also ask you um, how important it is psychologically in a game like this, where although Scotland have pushed you pretty close on a few occasions, you've, you guys have obviously won the last eight. How important is that when it comes to crunch moments in matches? Uh, my wife hates my moustache, so um, <laughs> part of the reason why I have it. Um, but... Um, Look, Scotland are an amazing team who have definitely pushed us. I know we've probably had the better end of the stick from the last, definitely in the last few en encounters, but um, a team that play with a lot of uh, passion and width and uh, physicality, you know, it's, um, it's, it's, you respect them because, you know, you don't, you really, really don't want to lose. So you respect them and you really want to go out there and put in performances that you're proud of. But um, we're looking forward to the challenge. You know, they've definitely got one of the best tens in the world and they've, you know, picked a nine who likes running from the base. And 
um, they're definitely probably going in with a mindset of scoring tries and putting us under a lot of pressure. So 6-2 uh, split on the bench. They've got a lot of forwards, probably you know, impact players that are able to also change a match. So we need to match them there. But um, no, look, we're looking forward to the occasion and putting in another performance we're proud of. James, just want to develop that then uh, yep. over here uh, about uh, your opponents directly uh, tomorrow in the, in the two wingers, two exceptional talents and two yeah. contrasting talents. Just try and put into words how you see uh, those talents and, and what difficulties they will pose for you tomorrow. Um, yes, obviously Darcy Graham's an exceptional player and um, fortunately I haven't actually had to man mark him. He's, I've never played opposite him um, in an international as far as I'm trying to think back now. But um, very, very good feet. He's similar to the two South African boys we played last week. Um, um, catch and pass and his ability to create something out of nothing is obviously, you know, and he's probably challenged by the two boys uh, last week. And um, He's definitely a handful, but... You want to challenge yourself against the best, and then you look at the uh, behemoth on the other end, who's you know he's a few inches taller than me, and he's got definitely a bit more muscle than me as well. So he's um, he's a serious threat, ball in hand. But I mean, we're going to try our best to put them under as much pressure as we can, and hopefully uh, Finn Russell doesn't find them too often in too much space. Okay, Brendan, uh, John. It, um just on that point with, with Finn Russell, probably Scotland are quite a unique side in, uh, at the minute in World Rugby that they so sort of revolve around one player. I'm just wondering how much you, your side will have learned from their performance against South Africa about how to contain his threat. Um, I, I think Blair, Blair Kinghorn, he, he, both him and Russell, uh, decision making, seeing space and be able to use these, these wingers that James is talking about, that's, that's a real concern, a real threat. They're world class at, at seeing the game unfold, looking for opportunities. Um, so, so we talk about being off our feet and making sure that we're making good decisions off the ball to put ourselves in good positions so that we're closing off gaps and not giving them opportunities to, to, to see too much. Um, so, yeah, South Africa in that second half did a good job of, of containing uh, Scotland. Uh, from the very start, we need to make sure that we're, we're, we're on our feet um, all in connected in defence, making good decisions to go to where we're needed, um, so that we we limit what they see and 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 put as much pressure on them as possible uh, to take away that, that time, so they can make poor decisions or kick. Alex, question for James. Uh, James, long um, unbeaten run for Ireland. What does that do for the team's self belief, confidence? Does that give you? a sense of invincibility going into games? And if it does, is there a danger that complacency might creep in? Um, yeah, we're obviously, um, it does give us confidence in what we've done over the last three to four years in, in terms of what we've built. And we know it works, but like I said earlier, even, against, even in wins, there's still things to learn. So... Um, invincible. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go anywhere near that word. Complacency is something that can't creep into this group as well, and it doesn't. Um, each week, there's, you know, there's there's more than just the 23 that could easily play and do a job for the side, uh, seamlessly fitting into into position. But uh, complacency is something that uh, won't be coming into the side. We understand the serious threats and we've respected every opposition that we've played so far in this competition so um, we're just as diligent with Scotland as we were with South Africa, Romania and Tonga. Okay we take the final question here, thank you. Hi James, um, just on your own game, um, at the start of your Ireland career a lot of people focus probably on the attacking side but more so recently you're picking up even Etzebeth and, and things like that, how pleasing is it that they're the, the highlight real moments now? Um, yeah, like it was Look, like, I didn't, I don't know, I just, I pretty much just fell into a position where I had to make a tackle, and um, that was the end product. Josh had the brunt of him, you know, there, but um, it's funny how the world works and probably just proves if you work on something long enough, you'll, uh, the fruits of the labour will, will come true. So, 
Um, I'm happy with where I am defensively, but uh, complete different beast tomorrow. Um, a 10 who likes to play wide, a 12 and 13 who take the ball to the line, and then two wingers who are exceptional with a fullback who plays on an axis with Finn. So it's, um, it's going to be another challenge, but something we're definitely looking forward to. And John, can I just ask you, the, the last two penalties in the, the previous game, both scrum penalties, I think, did Andy give you full credit for the victory? And, and how pleasing is that as a pack to... John hasn't that. stopped talking about them, <laughs> honestly. I, I rarely get credit. Um, <laughs> and I won't take credit. I think the boys adjusted so well to um, what was a very intense period of time before those penalties. And they, they adjusted so well. And that's what the boys do. That's what this group does. Is, is they're, they're able to adapt and adjust when the intensity climbs up. And, you know, that's going to be needed tomorrow again across the pitch, both sides of the ball, um, for us to make sure we're, we're able to adapt to what's in front of us, you know. OK, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Ireland. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Have a good day.